Good day, folks. Uh, welcome to Just Omer. I am uh, Omer C. Ahern, Jr. Uh, I am the uh, Grafton County Commissioner uh, for District 3 here in Grafton County. And this is my periodic uh, report to the people of Grafton County, specifically the people in uh, District 3, which encompasses the towns in southeastern Grafton County, up as far as uh, Campton and Warren and down to Alexandria, uh, Canaan, uh, Bridgewater, uh, Ashland, Holderness, and uh, Dorchester, and, and, and over to Grafton, and all the towns in between, uh, and Groton, and Groton as well. So again, the purpose of, of these programs is to keep the people uh, of, of Grafton County updated, uh, informed about what's going on in their Grafton County government. Um, as, as you know, or as I've shared with you in the past, to just give you a quick recap, I am one of three county commissioners. I serve with uh, <sighs> Wendy Piper, who is the county commissioner from District 1, which encompasses the towns of Hanover, Lebanon, and Enfield. She is the uh, present uh, chairperson of the Grafton County Board of Commissioners. And then we also serve with uh, Commissioner Linda Lauer of Bath, New Hampshire, and she serves the uh, folks in, in uh, District 2, which are the towns in the northern and western part of uh, Grafton County. And as the county commissioners by New Hampshire state law, which I'll also call statute or an RSA, we are uh, required, responsible for the operation and uh, uh, operation and maintenance uh, of the county nursing home. Uh, we have a 135 bed nursing home up in uh, North Haverhill, New Hampshire. Uh, we also are responsible for the running of the Department of Corrections, which is a house of correction and a county jail. And that's also up in uh, North Haverhill. And because we still have our farm there, we are responsible for the management and the operation, uh, not the day-to-day -day operation, but the management and operation of the dairy farm, which also has uh, uh, a vegetable uh, component growing vegetables and we also have a 750 acre woodlot up there so we're growing timber uh, uh, to uh, be good stewards of the land and you know every 10 to 12 years have a timber cut uh, in order to bring in more revenue. Uh, as I've said in the past the farm uh, has, a, uh, has a dairy operation where we milk somewhere between 78 and 80 cows uh, per day and with that milk, we sell it right now to Agrimark, uh, which is a wholesaler. And uh, last year, uh, the county farm brought in revenue on just on the sale of the milk of $350,000. We also sell uh, livestock. We sell uh, uh, dairy cows. We sell uh, uh, heifers. And we also sell pigs. And we also, as I said, so to sell pigs, we have to raise pigs. And we also have a chicken operation where we have eggs that we feed into the Department of Corrections and into the nursing home. Uh, we also, again, as I said, we have a vegetable operation on the farm and where we grow potatoes and winter squash and we'll be growing uh, sweet corn. Uh, the farm manager said the sweet corn this year is only going to be for the benefit of the inmates, the residents in the Department of Corrections. And uh, because of uh, labor shortages up at the county home this year, uh, we're not going to be planting, or the other two commissioners voted not to plant the vegetable fields So uh, this year. So uh, the big issue right now that the uh, commissioners are dealing with is the county budget. We have to have a county budget in place to uh, uh, offer to the county delegation. It's, it's a proposed, proposed budget by the county commissioners uh, to operate uh, the various uh, uh, requirements of the state statute and the operations of the nursing home, the jail and house of correction, the farm, and a few other programs. 
Uh, again, the statute that we're under says we're supposed to run the nursing home, the uh, house of correction and the farm, and any other um, operations that the uh, county commissioners deem are appropriate. Um, over the years, the county commissioners have uh, decided to fund other operations, which uh, I believe are not in keeping with the uh, core uh, purpose of county government. When, county, uh, when the county homes were first started back in the uh, 1870s, again, they were there to provide um, health care for uh, our elderly residents, uh, the uh, uh, incarceration of uh, those people that are sentenced by the court, and then a farm operation to feed the inmates in the House of Correction and to feed the folks in the nursing home. So that's why it's important to still have a farm. In, in furtherance of that, and because of you know, too many changes in the last few years, uh, the county has been relying upon purchasing a lot of its food for the nursing home and the House of Correction uh, from commercial food companies such as Cisco. And I have introduced a program to the county commissioners, which the county commissioners have adopted, entitled FarmDoc, F-A-R-M-D-O-C. And FarmDoc stands for Farm Department of Corrections. And the purpose of that is to get Grafton County back to doing what one of its original functions was, was to have the farm feeding into the Department of Corrections. And that's what we're working toward. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've reported. Uh, the county commissioners met uh, on April 20th, which is, I believe that was a Tuesday. Uh, we met with the uh, employee council in the morning to discuss what uh, their concerns were with the upcoming budget and the employee uh, compensation packages. And we're working on that. We had a report from uh, Jim Oaks, who was the maintenance superintendent. Uh, we have a 25-acre complex with a uh, multi-floor uh, county courthouse. Again, we have a very large uh, county house of correction, department of corrections. We have many farm buildings, the dairy barn, uh, the, the, the piggery, uh, garages for the tractors and farm implements. We have a, uh, a large nursing home that's been uh, added on to in the last couple, uh, uh, in the last 30 years. We have the large administration building. We have a uh, wood-fired uh, heating plant there. And we also have uh, the, what I call the old county commissioner's office building, which now houses the alternative sentencing program. And there's just a lot of uh, infrastructure there that the maintenance department uh, is responsible for maintaining and, and, and keeping in good operation. So, you know, I, I really appreciate the good work that Jim Oaks and um, his team in the Department of, Correction, uh, Department of Ma Maintenance Department provides. We also met with the uh, new finance director, Julie Libby, and that name may sound familiar to many of you. Julie uh, is the recently um, uh, retired, for lack of a better word, uh, county administrator in that uh, the county commissioners just before I uh, resumed my, my term of office on, on January 6th, the previous county commission uh, voted to hire Andrew Dorsett uh, to be the new business administrator, county administrator for, for Grafton County. We also met with uh, Jeffrey Stiegler, the high sheriff of Grafton County. We met with uh, Marcy Hornick, the Grafton County attorney. And again, we met with uh, Andrew Dorsett. Now, each one of these department heads that I've just listed from the uh, April 20th meeting, they present uh, printed reports. And now, the reason why I'm not going into any detail is because each one of these department heads or elected officials provides a written report that is appended to the uh, commissioner's minutes for April 20th. So if you go to the county, Grafton County uh, website, and you go to the commissioner's website, you'll see one of those little blocks at the top that says uh, commissioner meetings or commissioner minutes. If you go there, you will find uh, the uh, minutes of each of the commissioner's meetings from over the many, many years. 
and you will see attached as addendums uh, each one of these reports. So there's no need for me to go into uh, detail with what they're reporting. Um, at the, on, you know, but if there's something that I think is really, really, really critical, I will mention to you. But I only have a half hour to talk with you about things, and I don't want to overwhelm you too much. Uh, and I don't want to, I don't want to uh, infringe upon the uh, good offices of the uh, Pemmy Baker TV folks. Uh, I really appreciate them giving me an opportunity to make this uh, periodic report to you folks. Kudos to you folks at the Pemmy Baker TV. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, the, uh, uh, also on the agenda is the commissioner's issues. We have to approve the minutes of, of previous meetings. Uh, one of the big things uh, that I do, uh, I'm the clerk uh, of the Grafton County Commission, and one of the things that I have to do every week is I have to sign off on every single uh, invoice, uh, every single check I have to sign off, uh, you know, sign off on that's sent out of, of Grafton County. That's your money as the taxpayers for the most part, and part of my job is to make sure that that money is being properly uh, paid out for proper invoices. And so sometimes that takes me two hours after the commissioner's meeting to go through all of those invoices. But uh, we have some very good uh, folks up there in the, in the uh, bookkeeping department, for lack of a better term, and they do a very good job with the department heads. The department heads have to approve payment of bills in the first instance, and they're sent to uh, the finance people, and they review things. And then they're ultimately sent to the Board of Commissioners. And uh, the, do, the commissioners do sign off on uh, a, 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 a packet just listing all the individual checks. I go through and look at every single invoice. So I'm trying to do my due diligence for you folks, uh, the taxpayers of Grafton County. Uh, we did discuss the uh, Farm Dot program on April 20th a little bit. Uh, there's still a lot of preliminary uh, research that's going on. Uh, we have to see, uh, you know, what things have to be done if, for example, to, to meet the uh, meat uh, provisions of, of Farm Doc, to be able to feed uh, beef and pork and chicken into the House of Correction. There are rules and regulations from the United States Department of Agriculture, and there are rules from the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services, the Food Safety Division, that we're going to have to uh, follow. Uh, no, you know, th these rules did not exist when the counties were first started back in the 1870s, but for many reasons, uh, mad cow disease, for one, uh, we have to have certain uh, uh, facilities in place in order to process the beef and, and, and the pork. Um, we also have uh, a uh, prescription discount program through the uh, National Association of Counties. And over the last few years, uh, the uh, county residents who take advantage and utilize the prescription discount program have saved uh, almost $900,000 uh, out of their pocket. So if you're interested in, in the prescription discount program, certainly give the uh, county commissioner's office a call up in, uh, up in Grafton County, up at North Haverhill. And, uh, they uh, will, will certainly get you the information you need. There's a little card that you get, and uh, we, can, we can make that available to you. The county commissioner phone number uh, can be found uh, on the website, and I think uh, one of the numbers that you can call uh, is 787-2043. Uh, and uh, although that may be just the IT department, but if you get that number, you should be able to get to the commissioner's office. Uh, so that's what happened on, on April 20th. Uh, the, uh, so then again, we met uh, yesterday, April 27th, Tuesday. Today is Wednesday the 28th. And uh, we met at the Department of Corrections. Uh, by state law, uh, the county commissioners are required by state law to every six months do a tour of the uh, correctional facility. And so yesterday, uh, we met at the Department of Corrections uh, so that uh, the commissioners could do uh, their uh, semi-annual uh, tour. Uh, tour may not be the best word, but you know our inspection 
of the, uh, of the House of Correction. And as part of that, we uh, have to prepare a report to the New Hampshire uh, uh, Attorney General's Office, also known as the Department of Justice. And so uh, this is a copy of uh, the report, a report, uh, that we will be filing with the, the uh, New Hampshire Attorney General's Office with regard to the uh, uh, operations of the uh, Department of Corrections up there. We're answering questions like the general conditions up there at the DOC, odors, cleanliness, uh, pests, uh, hazards, uh, space, equipment, emergency, uh, waste issues, you know, moving the waste, uh, security, uh, condition of the inmates, uh, management by the, the staff. And so these are some of the things that we are going to report on to the Department of Justice. And those reports are also made available through the uh, Attorney General's website, uh, also known as the Department of Justice. So we met there yesterday, but before we started meeting with them, or we, before we started our tour, we had our regular meeting in the morning. And the first item on the agenda was uh, a, a virtual meeting with uh, the executive, co executive counselor for uh, District 1 here in, in New Hampshire, Joe Kenny, and uh, he is on the on the executive council. A uh, actually, it's a very powerful uh, part of our New Hampshire government. Uh, they advise uh, the governor of the state of New Hampshire, and <clears throat> uh, actually, our New Hampshire Constitution predates the federal Constitution. And when uh, our founding fathers in New Hampshire uh, passed our New Hampshire Constitution, uh, the um, issues that King George of England were creating for our, us colonists, those things that King George was doing to our folks was right on the mind <clears throat> of our uh, uh, New Hampshire folks that passed our first uh, New Hampshire Constitution. And so they made the Executive Council have a lot of power over the governor's office so there wouldn't be in any abuse of power by the governor. So uh, the uh, so, uh, Councillor Kenny talked with us about the, uh, uh, what they're doing to try to improve the economic climate in the North Country. And one of the things uh, that he said is, is a real, a, a three-part must for improving the economic uh, climate in the, in the North Country is uh, we have, again, to meet the needs of the businesses that we want to bring up there. Uh, <clears throat> we have to provide and make sure there's available workforce housing, uh, child care, child care, um, which is one of the issues that we've the county commissioners have addressed here in Plymouth uh, to help uh, the. Um, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, a new health, uh, a new child care facility going in on the um, uh, Tenney Mountain Highway. Uh, and so that's going to be coming, starting up here in a few months. And then the third thing, the third item, which the county addresses in a couple of other areas already, and that is drug and alcohol counseling, having that available for employees. And where Grafton County already uh, takes that into account is through our House of Correction program and, and some of our programs there and also through our alternative sentencing program. And Renee DePaulo is the head of our alternative sentencing program in Grafton County. And uh, we'll be talking about her in the, in the months ahead and what her program does. Uh, so we're very pleased to have shared with uh, Executive Counselor Kenny some of our concerns. Uh, we talked about um, the need to get the courts uh, reopened so that we can get uh, some inmates uh, that deserve it, you know, sentenced to our House of Correction so that we can get the labor issue at Grafton County Farm addressed and uh, provide uh, the uh, labor forces that we need to do the milking, to do the vegetable fields, and to you know, take care of the pigs and so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing that we did talk about with uh, Executive Counselor Kenny is a concern that the commissioners have for the traffic uh, on the main road that goes uh, through the uh, county complex and so we addressed that with him 
And uh, uh, later on, as I give you my report, I'll talk with you about the meeting that uh, our new business administrator, Andrew Dorsett, and our uh, uh, maintenance supervisor, Jim Oaks, had with two members from the uh, uh, New Hampshire Department of Transportation, two of their traffic engineers, William Lambert and uh, Christopher Turgeon. But I'll talk to you about that in a few minutes. Uh, we also, uh, and so Councillor Kenny had to go on to his next meeting. After we met with uh, Councillor Kenny, we did meet with Brent Ruggles, the IT manager, the information technology manager, and uh, his report, Brent's uh, report, is attached to the minutes that you'll see in a week or so after we approve the minutes. We'll approve the minutes of this meeting from yesterday at next week's commissioner meeting. Uh, and he uh, discussed some of the issues that, that he's dealing with uh, there. Uh, oh, it's just, you know, information technology is the heart of, of how, what makes our uh, 21st century county complex run. Uh, everybody's using computers, everybody's using software, uh, you know, the printers and being hooked up to the computers. It's, it's, just, it's just an absolute uh, maze of things that Brent, uh, in my opinion, does a great job with his staff in uh, making sure that everything is going as well as can be uh, hoped for when you're dealing with people uh, from, the, you know, from the Department of Corrections, uh, the county attorney's office, the sheriff's office, dispatch, uh, and all of the uh, county administrative offices. So uh, Brent and his crew and his team are constantly uh, on the go, trying to keep everything you know going smoothly. Uh, even you know even things as simple as emails. Uh, those those are issues that arise. Uh, after that, uh, the commissioners met with Renee DePaulo. Uh, the alternative sentencing director, and she gave us a report uh, from uh, Friendship House. Actually, we had the new uh, director of Friendship House uh, attend for a few minutes by Zoom, giving us an update on uh, what's going on there at Friendship House uh, up in Bethlehem. And uh, that program is uh, going to be restarting in a couple, three months. It will have... Uh, a total of uh, 36 beds uh, for, and these are for people who have drug and alcohol problems uh, that the county helps to fund up there, even though we have our own drug and alcohol uh, uh, facilities down in uh, North Haverhill at our county complex. But Bethlehem is, you know, up in the north, uh, northern part of the county. So at this point, we feel that that is a uh, good uh, need for uh, the tax dollars for the people up there, taxpayers up in that part of the county. And uh, Renee has several different parts of her program in the alternative sentencing, juvenile, restorative justice, um, uh, drug and alcohol counseling, and, and other areas. Again, Renee's reports are also attached to these minutes uh, that you'll see online at the county, Grafton County website. After that, we had a report from Tom Elliott, uh, the superintendent of the Department of Corrections, uh, giving us his, his uh, monthly report, even though we would be meeting with Tom and his staff uh, in a few minutes uh, to do the tour of the Department of Corrections, which, which we will talk about. Um, after that, again, we uh, had another follow-up meeting with the uh, employee council. Uh, these are five members, the employee council are five members of employees of the county who are not members of the union. And uh, we talked with them about uh, some more of the decisions uh, that the county commissioners made for the budget as they pertain to um, employee compensation. Uh, there were a couple of things uh, like the step increases that the uh, employee council had requested and the Board of Commissioners uh, two or three weeks ago had decided, again, to try to get the budget uh, more in line with the needs of the taxpayers. Uh, but because of some hard work from some of our department heads and the uh, financial administrator, Julie Libby, they were able to find other cuts in the budget and find other sources of revenue 
so that the commissioners could agree to restore uh, the step increases for uh, the uh, uh, non-union employees at the county uh, complex and still give them a 2% COLA and a couple of other things. But those will all be discussed in the budget, which will be made available later on uh, toward the end of June, which should be online for you to look at that as well. Uh, after meeting with the employee council, um, we uh, dealt with some of our uh, uh, commissioner issues. Again, we proved the minutes from the previous meetings. Um, I was handed another thick pile of check uh, invoices or in, uh, invoices for me to sign, which I was not able to uh, get back uh, to, uh, get not, was it not able to get to right at that moment because we knew that we had the uh, uh, DLC uh, inspection tour to work on next. Um, we discussed also uh, in, in part of our conversations with the employee council, the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. Uh, and everybody is salivating about the uh, expected uh, income uh, for Grafton County. The issue is, the problem is, the challenge is, we don't have any final uh, uh, rules or regulations from the, the Federal Department of Treasury as to what Grafton County can do with this uh, money that we're supposed to get. And it is quite a sum of money, but we may not be able to use it all. It's going to have some very strict uh, guidelines as to what it can be used for. But uh, if you look at uh, uh, the U.S. Treasury uh, website, I think you'll find some information. Plus, uh, because Grafton County is a member of the National Association of Counties, NACO. You've heard me talk about that uh, in the past. Uh, there was a, a legislative analysis for counties with regard to the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, which was provided to us uh, a few days ago, which uh, uh, gives us some information. The problem is, again, we do not have the final say from the uh, United States Federal Treasury. Um, we did... Um, do our tour of the Department of Corrections, and uh, we will be doing uh, a report. Uh, the commissioners will be doing a report, sending it down to the um, um, Attorney General's Office, also known as the Department of Justice. Some of the things uh, that I see when I work on the invoices, again, I said I'm the clerk of the commission. I have to sign off on every one of the invoices. You know, some of the things that are really troubling to me and to the other commissioners is the amount of money that we spend every week on contract nurses for the nursing home, also known as traveling nurses. We have contracts with three separate uh, contract uh, nursing outfits. Uh, two are in Nebraska. One is in Iowa. Actually, there's four or five. Uh, I think we have another one out of Minnesota. And so I'm just... You know, the, the, the amount of money that we're spending with these contract nursing agencies, to me, is astounding. Where, you know, rather than paying money to an outfit in uh, Nebraska, Iowa, or Minnesota, I would rather see those dollars that we're spending uh, uh, compensating people, nursing staff, whether RNs, LPNs, LNAs, uh, you know, any nursing staff that work for the county directly. And, uh, but because of the nature of the nursing shortage throughout the nation, we have to deal with contract nursing. So uh, I am out of time. I want to uh, thank uh, 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 PBTV uh, and, and, their and those folks for letting me do my Just Omer project. I want to uh, thank the uh, constituents who have contacted me offline to talk with me about things. I uh, want to thank the other two commissioners that I work with, Commissioner Piper, Commissioner Lauer, and God bless the state of New Hampshire. Live free or die. There are things uh, that are greater than death, and God bless America. Thank you and take care.